Hey kids, how you doing? Um, as we uh, finished off our study of the fall of France, I uh, kind of talked a lot about as well as watched uh, the movie Dunkirk. Uh, there was a period there of about nine months or so where uh, Germany tried to sort of bomb Britain into giving up. They never were able to actually invade Britain like everyone thought they were going to right after they conquered France because the German Navy, which you need to, you know, you need boats to take the German soldiers across the channel, uh, was never anywhere as strong as the German army. So even though the German army was pretty much uh, unbeatable at this point in the war, you couldn't, you couldn't use the German Navy to get them to where they needed to go. So they tried to bomb Britain into just giving up. And uh, after about nine months, they sort of just abandoned that, uh, abandoned that plan. And uh, they turned their attention toward the country that they always intended to be the main enemy in the, uh, in the first place, and that was the Soviet Union. So in June of 1941, uh, Germany invades the Soviet Union. And this is, this is really the biggest part of World War II. We don't hear quite as much about it because it is a uh, uh, part of the war that the United States wasn't involved in, but you had more people involved in this part of World War II than any other part. And basically whoever won here was going to win World War II. So that's kind of where we're, uh, where, where we're at. So let's take a look at the article. And if you could, please follow along while I read. World War II, the German invasion of the Soviet Union, age old hatred. After Germany failed to defeat the British in the Battle of Britain, Adolf Hitler turned his attention eastward. He felt the British continued to fight because they hoped the Soviet Union might still join the war against Germany. He then made the decision to invade the Soviet Union. Germany signed a non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union in 1939, clearing the way for the invasion of Poland. This made the Soviets think Hitler never planned to attack them. Hitler, on the other hand, cared little for promises and never saw the pact as anything more than a way to delay war with the Soviets. Hitler hated the Soviet Union and made that very clear in his book, Mein Kampf. A costly side trip to the Balkans. Hitler hoped to invade the Soviet Union in spring 1941, but events in Yugoslavia and Greece made him postpone the invasion. Benito Mussolini, the fascist dictator of Italy, was increasingly jealous of Germany's conquests. He hoped to add to his own shabby empire by conquering the Mediterranean countries of Albania and Greece. Albania fell without much struggle, but the Greeks resisted fiercely and actually pushed the unmotivated Italian army back into Albania. Germany was forced to send an army south into Greece to subdue the Greek army. To get there, they had to pass through Yugoslavia. Hitler signed a non-aggression pact with Yugoslavia, clearing the way into Greece. The Yugoslav people, though, did not like the Germans dating back to World War I. They overthrew the pro-German government and rejected the pact. Hitler was furious. He invaded Yugoslavia with some of his most brutal SS troops to punish them for their treachery. The Yugoslav army was defeated easily, but they retreated into the mountains and formed armed units to strike back at the Germans whenever they could. The Yugoslavs formed the first open resistance movement to Nazi power anywhere in Europe. The SS murdered thousands of Yugoslavs whenever German soldiers were killed, and they continued to murder civilians as revenge for resistance attacks. But the rebellion against the Nazis spread. Meanwhile, valuable time needed to conquer the Soviet Union was wasted. And here in Yugoslavia, you see the first resistance movement, and they eventually sprang up all over Europe, although the Yugoslavian one might have been the most successful of, of all of them, certainly most powerful. Uh, the last blitzkrieg. On June 22, 1941, the full might of the German army was thrown against the Soviet Union. Over 2 million Germans rolled into Soviet territory in a massive surprise attack designed to destroy Russia. The Germans attacked in three directions. They attacked north, where their prize was the city of Leningrad, which was known as St. Petersburg in the time of the Tsars, still is today. They attacked straight east toward the capital of Moscow. They also attacked through Ukraine, trying to capture the oil-rich areas of the southern Soviet Union. Week after week, the invasion sank deeper into the Soviet Union. The Red Army was totally unprepared for the attack and was smashed, just as the French Army was a year earlier. Like the pinchers of a giant crab, German forces surrounded thousands of Red Army soldiers. They repeated the process again and again, as hundreds of thousands of Soviets were taken prisoner in the, in the invasion's first weeks. Slaughter on the Russian Front 
The war in Russia was the most brutal in human history. Both Hitler and Stalin were murderous dictators and cared little for the lives of their own people, much less the enemy. Many Soviet citizens were overjoyed at first when the Germans arrived, thinking anything was better than living under Stalin. But the Germans were taught Nazi hatred for years, and those teachings had an effect. They viewed the Soviets as untermenschen, or subhuman. The Germans treated the Russians with cruelty and brutality. Following the German army units, special units of the SS rounded up Jews and began the first executions on a massive scale. The horror of the final solution began in the hot days of summer 1941. Knowing they could expect nothing but death from the invading Germans, the Soviet people united in the terrible hatred of the Nazis and engaged in a war of extermination that claimed the lives of 30 million people in Eastern Europe by 1945. General Winter. By mid-November, the Germans surrounded Leningrad. Rather than attack the city, they put it under siege. This means the German army surrounded the city, not letting anything in or out. They then shelled and starved the city, hoping for surrender. Though 500,000 residents of Leningrad died of starvation in the war's first winter, the city refused to give up. Meanwhile, the Germans approached Moscow, which was the capital of the Soviet Union and the last major city in European Russia. Trying to save their city, the Soviets refused to be budged from their lines a few miles outside, sacrificing thousands in the effort. Then the temperature dropped. The first snows came in mid-October. By mid-November, the weather was so cold, the oil froze in the German vehicles. The only way they would start at all is if they were kept running all night, which took a terrible toll on fuel reserves. Most German soldiers lacked winter clothing because the commanders assumed the war would be over by winter and did not plan for enough. Meanwhile, the Soviets threw hundreds of thousands of fresh Siberian troops into the battle, whom the Germans never even knew existed until they attacked. The myth of the invincible German blitzkrieg sputtered, slowed, and finally died on the frozen wastes outside Moscow, over a thousand miles from Germany. And as I record this here, you can see the bright sunshine out there. It is currently below zero and it is the middle of the day. Uh, this is the typical kind of day for this uh, fighting that we were just reading about here, uh, where it never got above zero degrees and guys had to live outside. And if you were a civilian, you would have to potentially leave your home and survive outside if the uh, if the battle was coming. And neither army particularly cared how uh, how difficult it, it was for you. It was truly a war of extermination. And we'll get deeper into that as we come back uh, later on when we learn more about the, the war in the Soviet Union. All right. See you then. Bye bye.